I want to preface this by saying I had a really good fucking day. Uh, other than this. Um, well, and a few other things. I, I, I got some fucking crotch blowout on my jeans, and, uh, that, uh, that, that got some chafing, uh, <laughs> while I, while I did some walking slash running today that sucks so much right now, but, um, you know, I, I got in good run, a good run, and I, you know, it was shady, I had cool weather, I had a lot of, of, of endorphins, like, uh, some hail, some rain, and I still got to, to be reminded that I fucking live here in this gorgeous city of Spokane. Um, and, and that will never probably get old. But what does get old is being a good source of information only to be mostly ignored by 99.9 percent of the population and even that like one like uh point uh one percent of the population that does listen to me uh most of them don't even like me so like the people who do listen to me are a distinct minority and they don't like me i don't have a big audience even though i'm right like a lot and it sounds like bitching, but the things I'm right about are like world altering and tyranny and it's awful. And I'm one of the only people, not the only people, I'm not like trying to say that, but like I'm one of the only people discussing it and it gets ignored until it's an actual issue. <laughs> so... I wanted to bring up The Economist. Um, now, The Economist, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, is uh, a, an outlet owned by the wealthy. And, you know, it, it's it's owned by the wealthy and powerful, the, like, age-old, um, like, banking families and shit. And, like, a bunch of uh, international mag magnates and, like, uh, the Agnelli family of Italy, the Rothschild family, the Cadbury family, the Schroeder family, the Leighton family. Um, and, and I posted that um, in, a, in, a, in a thread um, reminding people of a cover they did in <laughs> April of 2020 where they showed like the common person as his little wiener dog on a leash with the doctors on another leash with a big ass hand in the sky and it says everything is under control and both of the the dog and the doctor have masks on big government liberty and the virus uh the economist could not have been more direct about what they thought of you you're the dog you're the dog. Um, you know? So I said, if anyone tells you there is no conspiracy, remember that a group of wealthy state-connected families put you on a leash and laughed. And, uh, that's exactly true. That's exactly what they did. They put you on a leash and they laughed. Um, so, you know... And then, and then uh, a couple days ago, I also said the Economist is owned by some of the wealthiest families on the planet. They could offer it for free, but instead, these banks and mega corporation uh, and mega corporate moguls charge a hundred bucks a year for a limited time because that's half off. They're bold enough to sell you their propaganda. Um, and and that everything is under control. Post it was all about how great government is and how they're going to not only put this pandemic under wraps, but they're also going to change a whole lot about how everything works so that they can have more control. That's a good thing, guys. Um, and so what, what were they saying last year? What were the elites saying 
And why am I bringing all this up? Well, wouldn't you know, um, The Economist comes out with an article with a big-ass uh, uh, fake-looking Bitcoin on the front of it saying the digital currencies that matter. Get ready for FedCoin and the E-Euro. I'm not making that up. I am looking at it. It's why I'm paper white, because so is the economist's background. The digital currencies that matter. <laughs> Don't you love it? They're saying none of your shit matters. This is what matters, baby. This is it. Um, and, and their, their, their image here, uh, below a thing that says the rise of e-money, as though currency, what, like, cryptocurrency wasn't already money, is government-issued digital currency in tech we trust. And it's got, like, the bank thing on the left and the all-seeing eye on the right with a big-ass G with the, it's, 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 it's exactly what the, 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 the Fed masturbates to at night. I guarantee that this is exactly what they masturbate to at night. Um, and, and, and what did they say? You know? Um, what, what in their infinite wisdom did they think was good about this? They said, Technological change is upending finance. Bitcoin has gone from being an obsession of anarchists to a $1 trillion asset class that may fund man uh, that many fund managers insist belongs in any balanced portfolio. Swarms of digital day traders have become a force on Wall Street. PayPal has 392 million users, a sign that America is catching up with China's digital payments giants. Don't you fucking love that? Catching up with China's digital payment giants. China uses digital payments and a social credit score as a means of using state capitalist force to control their population and keep them on a leash. And the economist who wants you on a leash says that's good and that's what they should be doing. That they're trying to catch up. Um, and... <laughs> uh, they do all this right after insulting anarchists and implying... That it's terrible that anarchists like Bitcoin. Um, yet, as our special report explains, the least noticed dis disruption on the frontier between technology and finance may end up as the most revolutionary. Revolutionary! The creation of government digital currencies. Revolutionary! Which typically aim to let people deposit funds directly with a central bank. Revolutionary! bypassing conventional lenders revolutionary guys that's what they're calling revolutionary a revolt against what motherfuckers i'm very angry i don't know if you can tell um these gov coins are a new incarnation of money they promise to make finance work better but also to shift powers from in individuals to the state alter geopolitics, and change how capital is allocated. REVOLUTIONARY! They are to be treated with optimism and humility. It's fucking spit in your throat! This is what they want you to believe is revolutionary. They're calling this revolution. Against what? If the state is getting power and it's a revolution, it's a revolution against the people. But, <laughs> but hey, they have a smiling face and a big corporate logo. They can't be the bad guys, right? They can't be the bad guys because they've got a big-ass red corporate logo with easy-to-read fonts behind it. These gov coins are a new incarnation of money. They promised to make a finance... Oh, well, I already read that. A decade or so, amid the wreckage of the Lehman Brothers, Paul Volcker, a former head of the Federal Reserve, grumbled that banking's last useful innovation was the ATM. Since the crisis, the industry has raised its game. Raised its game. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, you're still trying to co-opt language, aren't you? Aren't you? Ain't you? Step up your game, yo. You ain't got enough power, G. Um. <laughs> Banks have modernized their cre creaking IT systems. Entrepreneurs have built an experimental world of decentralized finance, of which Bitcoin is the most famous part, and which contains a riot of tokens. A riot of tokens. Databases. Hold on, I have to refresh the page again. Um, and conduits that interact to varying degrees with traditional finance. Meanwhile, financial platform firms now have over 3 billion customers who use e-wallets and payment apps, alongside PayPal or other specialists such as Ant Group, Grab, and Mercado Pago, established firms such as Visa and Silicon Valley wannabes, wannabes, such as Facebook. Gotta love that. Gotta love how Facebook can still be an underdog after it has accepted CIA money for a decent chunk of its career. After it has been a toady for the government and its key message spreader uh, in terms of information control through the Atlantic Council and their partnership with intelligence agencies and the fact that there's a government to Facebook pipeline whereby most of their employees worked in the government, or at least many. <laughs> the Economist really doesn't want you to read this without paying them 200 fucking dollars. Um, <laughs> uh, government or central bank digital currencies are the next step, but they come with a twist. Because they would centralize power in the state rather than spread it through networks or give it to private monopolies. As though the state isn't a monopoly. The idea behind them is simple, revolutionary. Instead of holding an account with a retail bank, you would do so direct with a central bank through an interface resembling apps such as Alipay or Venmo. Rather than writing checks, gotta love spelling checks, Q-U-E-S, you can tell this, this, this author is not from America, or paying online with a card, you could use the central bank's cheap plumbing. And your money would be guaranteed by the full faith of the state, not a fallible bank. The state's infallible, guys! Want to buy pizza or help a broke sibling? No need to deal with Citigroup's call center or pay MasterCard's fees. The Bank of England and the Fed. <laughs> these people, these people have such temerity. The Bank of England and the Fed are at your service. This meta metamorphosis of central banks from the aristocrats of finance to its laborers sounds far-fetched, but it's underway. Over 50 monetary authorities representing the bulk of global GDP are exploring digital currencies. The Bahamas has issued digital money. China has rolled out its e yuan pilot to cover 500,000 people. The EU wants a virtual euro by 2025. Britain has launched a task force. In America, the world's financial hegemon is building a hypothetical e-dollar. <gasps> It's so good. It's revolutionary. Everything else is a riot and illegitimate and untrustworthy and fucking fallible. We're gods. That's what they want you to think. One motivation for governments and central banks is a fear of losing control. No shit, Sherlock. That's why you keep on making me reload this fucking page. Um. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm, I'm very frustrated, and you can probably tell, but I think it's fucking deserved. I really do. I do. I think it's deserved. Um, you know, and it doesn't get much better than this, the article. Um, it, it's, it's all about the fact that this is going to <laughs> revolutionize things by taking power away from the people. People are freaking out about this article. <laughs> They're freaking out about this article for good reason. Because it's arrogant trash and because it's also probably going to happen. Um, but gee, if only like a year ago, somebody had written a series of posts about how they were going to do this. If only somebody had also compared the U.S. to China and said in, in, instead of saying that 
we need to go with the infallible godlike U.S. government. That maybe um, the U.S. government should be avoided at all costs. If only somebody came out with that article, right? Nobody did, though, right? No, that's bullshit. I did. I did. And I, 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 I get real frustrated because I can put out information that's really solid and extremely good and people don't read it. They don't read it. Which is why I included my nice snide little tweet here, which almost nobody liked. If only someone had talked about this a year ago, and I included a screenshot of my article, which, by the way, will not keep popping up and demanding that you pay $200. If, you, if every user of Hackerus Nexus paid $200, that would give us so much money for so much more content, and we could live better. We're... we're if the Agoras Nexus got the funding the Economist does um, so that the, the, the wealthy and powerful could continue to amass capital um, <laughs> while they already have this big-ass nest egg and most of them don't need to worry about shit, while they could throw their investments at their fucking newspaper rather than throwing it into 80,000 assets so that they can spread it like throughout their real estate and... and T t tie all their property value to, to assets so that they can dodge the taxes that they fucking love so much when you're the one paying them. You know, <laughs> I digress. Um, the point is that I, po I posted this. Additionally, in the nothing to see here category a year ago, almost exactly, a pandemic sweeping the globe, tainting all paper currency and pushing people to stop using it. That's happening alongside the nationalization of the Federal Reserve and the in introduction of trillions more dollars into the economy. Digital, of course. And don't even think about looking into what Bill Gates said about his foundation's work in digital money. Nope. Or the fact that he said, The foundation is involved in digital money, but unlike Bitcoin, it will not be anonymous digital money. Over the next five years, I think digital money will catch on in India and parts of Africa and help the poorest a lot. The poor. Like the first ones to get ID2020? Nah. Um, but let's look at the side project of one of the ID2020 founders. Accenture, the digital dollar project. Their claim in bold letterhead on the official site is that they're leading the discussion on a U.S. central bank digital currency. They claim to ensure the dollar can serve the broadest possible range of users in an increasingly digital global economy and thereby maintain its privileged position and support orderly adjustment in international monetary relations. Consideration needs to be given to plans to adopt a digital dollar issued by the Federal Reserve System. Their project directors include David Treat, Senior Managing Director, Co-Lead of Accenture's Blockchain Business and Accenture Lead of the New York Fintech Innovation Lab. Funny! Accenture blockchain attached to a universal blockchain-based identification system, which is something I went over earlier in the article. The fact that the Accenture blockchain is also what's going to be relied on for the ID system attached to vaccines. Mmm! Really? Like, it's almost like somebody already went over this. It's set up for release in a year which so happens to have a year which so happens to a year which so happens to have an overhyped pandemic unnecessarily overloading the healthcare system and being used as an excuse to push martial law this pandemic is also being used as an excuse to amp up defense production to a fascist degree with the idea of suspension of habeas corpus being seriously kicked around Etc. Etc. Nothing to see here, though, folks. Right? <laughs> you just you you just avoid the long-haired, bearded conspiracy theorist and make sure to make a lot of basement jokes and disregard everything I fucking say for the most part. Uh, when I come out with this article a year ago that says Panopticon Rising, COVID nineteen, and the elite enslavement plan, don't even entertain the idea that I could be telling the truth. Don't even entertain the idea that I could be correct. I'm full of shit because you don't like me, and that's all. Meanwhile, they did what I said they would do. They said what I said they would say. And eventually, we're all left with Fed coin. Fed coin. Revolution against the people. That's what we're getting. End of story. 
and it might actually be the end of story if we don't get off our asses and finally say, you know what, <laughs> maybe there is a conspiracy. Because the best and most effective conspiracies are the ones that get people to ignore they exist. That's the reason I hate it, hate it, when people say do not ascribe to malice what can adequately be described by incompetence. No! Don't do that. Because then all somebody has to do is convince you that they're too stupid, that their organization is too incompetent to do this sort of thing. And <laughs> this stupid government myth can make you think that they're not doing what I say they're going to be doing because I don't follow your stupid rule about not ascribing malice. I might be just a little bitter, you know? Maybe I'd be a little bit less bitter if people would share my stuff. Not the, the, the sort of people who've been sharing my stuff this whole time. I know I've got like a tight core group of people who actually give a fuck. But like everybody else. I'm talking... If people started to share not only my stuff, but also the stuff that's also put out by other conspiracy theorists. If people started to be bold and actually talk about this shit, even though it's going to be unpopular, maybe it won't be so unpopular, and maybe we can actually do something about these systems, whatever, symptoms too, before they have a chance to fully develop. Hmm? Because life is short. I can't keep talking forever. And hell, I might even have people who want to shut me up. You know? Guaranteeably, I have people trying to get me censored over petty bullshit because <laughs> there are certain people who are so wrapped up in their tiny little lives that are worthless that they report my tweets even though they're true. Um, <laughs> I have proof of that recently happening. You know? It's not enough that governments want me quiet. They've also got a, a, an army of mentally defective simps always doing their dirty work, whether by intention or not. And people wonder why I've got that Joker poster behind me. Maybe because the Joker, when he burnt all that money, wasn't too far off from the real solution, which is to destroy the dollar. Not give it more fucking power and act like a revolutionary. You slime! Anyway, I have housemates and I'm probably disturbing them. So, I'm going to stop the recording soon. But before I do, it's <laughs> sponsored by Opsec Drip, which a channel link will be right there. Um... It is 60-second news and information on a daily basis, read by a guy in a shamog in 240 glorious pixels. Feel free to check out his channel and subscribe. My channel will be over here as well. Uh, make, him, make, make his money worth it. Anyway, <laughs> smash the state.